to a slightly grey and grisly day in northern France and a slightly crusty old Fiat 500. Doesn't sound like the most thrilling premise for a video, I grant you, but it is, actually. Because, if you listen closely, you'll notice something different about this old Fiat 500. You hear that? This sucker's electrical. But we're not here to review this car today, and that's a good thing because there's not that much to talk about. This is not a posh EV resto mod. It doesn't have a refurbished interior. It's not fast. It, it doesn't have huge range. And that's the point. What we have here is the entry level of EV conversion. This is bargain basement EV conversion, and it's the work of a company based here in France called Transition One, who, for just a few thousand euros, minus a generous government grant, will turn your old banger into a no-frills, no-emissions electric vehicle. This is Transition One, and this is fully charged. Farnborough, Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney, the number one festival for clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live in Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we cannot wait to see you there. So then, welcome to Transition One HQ, somewhere in rural northern France. Most of the office workshop factory is actually housed in multiple shipping containers that you can see behind me for the sake of agility. It means they can move the factory around as they please. Behind me, you see a line of 2B converted cars. These are some of the first models that Transition One will offer conversion kits for in various states of undress. I'll be honest with you. Normally, we would wait until a company is a little bit further along before showcasing it on the channel. Transition One is still a good year away from putting this into production, building the finalized version of these kits at scale. But here's why I just couldn't wait any longer to show you the work they're doing here. First of all, it's bloody exciting. Half the comments on any video that I've ever made on Fully Charged is you guys screaming out for a sub 10,000 pound, 10,000 euro electric car. Well, guess what? There's one sitting outside your driveway. It's just that it's got an engine at the moment. You send it to these guys, they'll chop some bits out, put some other bits in, Bob's your uncle, lecky car. The other thing that really intrigues me about Transition One is that it's been signed off by the French government. They've had a look at the work they're doing here. They've approved it as meeting all the required safety regulations and have therefore agreed to subsidize the cost, significantly increasing the price of this conversion. So it's exciting stuff. There's not a huge amount to see. There's not glistening robots in the background. This is not the Zwickau plant. But what there is, is one very charismatic founder who I think we better go have a chat with. I'm Eric, bonjour. Thank you very much for having us here today. I want to start by talking to you about this. You said something when we were emailing that really caught my attention. Yeah. The first time that I emailed you, you replied and you said, yes, you can come and see me, but I want to make clear we're not a car company, we're a climate change company. Yeah. What did you mean by that? It's a big difference because in a car company, the new car, there's a lot of feeders, a lot of French for electric uh, vehicle, and we are, we are an ecological transition company because we are on circular economy, sufficiency, and a lot of things to, to be sure we, we propose the right solution for tomorrow. There's two things to me that gets me really excited about this. One is the price point, because as we know, a lot of electric cars, most yeah. electric cars are still too expensive for most people, but the other is this repurposing of existing products. If we want to replace everything by new things, it's not possible. Too much waste. So the goal is to, to change something. That is, for me, I'm convinced there is two things really important. Simple to explain, and the retrofit is really simple. We extract this engine and replace by electric motor and a battery. Really easy to understand. I tested it with people from five years old to 99. Uh, easy to understand in 30 seconds. You, you can understand that. Mm. And the second point it's if you want to change something, it's a solution, an affordable solution. Mm. Because the best solution with uh, too much. Uh, expensive, you, you cannot get 
and an acceptance of that. Okay, so we've got kind of a before and after here. This is obviously an engineless 500. Yeah. This is Transition One Voiture 0002. This is a finished article yeah. which we've been driving around Paris in today. Not Paris, Orléans, I should say. Um, in very basic terms, can you explain what the process is? What comes out? What goes in? Because it's all about changing as little as possible, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, in the retrofit, uh, it's really, like I said, it's really easy to understand. We, we extract the, the uh, thermal powertrain, the combustion powertrain, uh, and we replace it by our own generic powertrain. Uh, here it's um, the Descartes Fiat 500, but we can make it on Renault Clio, Twingo, Kangoo, uh, and Pidgeot as well. Uh, but the, the, the process to, to convert a car is to extract the powertrain and replace by our own powertrain, generic powertrain, and uh, to integrate the, the battery pack at the, the place of the, of the tank. And we've still got gearbox in there. It's, it's really changing as little as possible, isn't it? Yeah, one of the secrets uh, of the retrofit, you have to avoid to change too much thing. Mm. Because to, to, to allow the, the client to use their own car uh, on the public roads, uh, we need to get approval. And if you, t if you change too much things, you have to, to make too much tests to validate the, sa the, the safety. Uh, so if we can avoid to make too much tests, it's better. Uh, for me, for me the, the, the retrofit, it's a big challenge to change something in the, the behavior of the people. So explain me the, 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 the SWOT uh, the, of the, of the, for, for about the gearbox. And uh, without gearbox, it's, we, we, ha we had to design a new parts to transfer the, the movement to, to the wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the gearbox, we reduce the, the things to change. Oh, found the Euro. Welcome inside the electric Transition One Fiat 500. I cannot stress enough how unchanged this interior is. It's all the same. Gear stick, still intact. I'm sure some of you are curious as to how this works. I'll explain to you. As Imeric explained it to me, gear two you'd use for like hill starts, gears three and four for normal driving, gear five for the motorway. So you do actually get more torque in those lower gears and higher top speed in the higher ones. Petrol heads the world over have been crying at the death of the manual gearbox. Well, you may still be able to have one in your electric car in the future. There's obviously some, some kind of bits and bobs hanging out because this is pre-production. It'll be a bit tidier in the finished article. One thing I do like as well is America's promised that your fuel gauge in your gauge cluster will show your state of charge, which is reassuring. Imeric, I would love to hear some numbers. Could you talk to me a little bit about range, about the power of the motor that you're putting yeah. in, about the charging speed, and then price as well? I'd be interested to hear. And if you, and the target for the customers uh, for this kind of car, it's for daily use. Mm -hmm. It's not for vacation. It's not to move all around the country. Yeah. Uh, it's to use your car locally. Sure. So simple solution to use locally. Okay. But about feeders, so we decided to propose 100 kilometers, mm -hmm. 15 kilowatt hour sure. uh, about battery. Uh, and like that, you, you can use daily uh, your, your core yeah. uh, because um, you, you don't need too much range mm. per day. Yeah, so 100 kilometers, about 60 miles. That's uh, uh, maybe a yeah. bit more if you're just doing city driving. We do have regenerative braking in yeah, here as well. Yeah, it depends your drive. Of it depends course. temperature as well, the weather. Yeah, right, come on, stop uh, teasing me. Pricing roughly, what do you expect? Our proposition yeah. is to offer the retrofit uh, up from 5,000 euros mm. after subsidies. Of course, the, the, the biggest question, okay, but without subsidies, because in countries that could be different sure, regarding course, yeah. the, propos the proposal of the government, of the lands, and mm -hmm. so on, our industrial price, it's to reach a price between seven and 8,000 euros. Before subsidies. Before yeah. subsidies. Uh, because 
with an affordable solution, you help more people to decide to change something. Mm. And actually, at that price, if, if we can get it down to, let's say, five, 6,000 euro after yeah. your subsidy, well, you could go and buy an old petrol Fiat 500 for, I don't know, 2,000 euro less with a petrol engine, bring it to transition one, you know, 8,000 euro later, you've got a small electric car. You can't buy anything for that cheap, anywhere close to it at the moment. Yeah, in fact, w what you said, okay, there is a big difference of price. It, it, it's, the, it's the target mm. to be sure that a lot of people will be able to, to convert the car. If it's at the same price, there is no interest. Uh, in, interest only on the low, low, pro, low carbon production, uh, but not a lot of people could be interested by that. So low carbon production and a cheaper solution, it's better. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, some people will be interested by new car. Mm. But if we want to change something, we are in a, a ecological transition period uh, and we have to change our own behavior, our own needs. Mm. Uh, and the retrofit, it's a new solution. Yeah. Automotive makers in the time uh, teach us, ta taught us, uh, you have to sell a car, maintain your car, repair your car, resell the car, but never improve the car. Mm. So here we are with car 0002, car 0001 by the way, was a Renault Twingo, très franche. I've been driving around uh, Orléans in this all morning and it is a lovely little thing. Small, simple electric cars make me so happy and it is quite strange being in a three pedal old car with a manual stick in between you and the passenger but you kind of just get used to it after a while and stop thinking about that stuff. I just want, to, just want to recap those numbers because they really are quite intriguing. About 100 kilometers of range, about 60 miles, a bit more if you're just doing city driving. There is regenerative braking, which is on max strength all the time, as it should be in a really simple EV. The battery is 15 kilowatt hours. The smallest battery EV that I've driven is the Dacia Spring with I think 27 kilowatt hours and that may sound impossibly small but if you're getting a hundred kilometers of urban range out of it it's probably enough for quite a lot of people and what that smaller battery means is lightness it's compact you're not lugging around half a ton of battery everywhere you go using up additional juice because of all the weight it's small simple minimalist EV conversion. This is a completely different mindset to any kind of EV conversion that I've seen. One other thing that we've not spoken about yet, which is really fascinating to me, I was kind of expecting to see sort of cars in bits being converted when we got here, but actually Transition One is not planning on doing the converting themselves. They're going to make the kits for all these different cars. You order the kit and it's then delivered to your local approved garage. You know all those garages around the world who are going to have less and less work to do as we transition into low maintenance EVs? They're going to do this for you. Transition One are going to teach garages how to do this conversion it's quite straightforward they will then do that for you around the corner from where you live and the aim is to get the whole process down to around four hours four hours you go to your garage in the morning you pick, you pick up your electric car at lunchtime think about that Interest. How much have you? Uh, how many people have got that? At the you? moment, we are over ten thousand requests to retrofit cars. Oh, uh, not only Fiat Five Hundred. Sure. The classic one, yeah. for example, uh, up to Hummer, up to a bus, up to trucks, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot on uh, light cars because we are focused on light cars because it's the most popular cars on the European roads. Sure. Also uh, the ones that we have the least electric choices for, the ones that most people can afford. Yeah, is the and, simplest, and right? the, the, the architecture uh, of the car is really similar. Mm. Uh, engine at the front, 
tank at the back yeah. uh, and with a similar architecture that will be better to implement our generic Makes sense. Per, per train. So we've got rolling pre-production cars, we've got the components, yeah. you've got the approval of the French government. Roughly how long do you think until I can come to Transition 1 and buy a conversion kit for my Fiat 500, for example? Uh, in our roadmap, mm -hmm. at the end of this year, uh, 2022, we will start the sales. Mm. And the first delivery will be on the first quarter of 2033. Wow. Between, between all of that, uh, this is approval. Uh, and we industrialize our approach about approval to extend our uh, uh, the number of uh, uh, models in our catalog because approval, uh, we will get approval for a model. So uh, uh, with uh, versions, mm -hmm. uh, Dazzle, Gas and, and so on. So every individual model that you convert for needs its own kind of approval just to make sure. Yeah, it's so the, the approval is not our production, yeah. our unit of retrofit, it's by model. Mm -hmm. So Fiat 500, okay. uh, Mini, and so on, because we have to validate the integration is safe. Mm -hmm. uh, so the approval is not a license that, that will be unacceptable if it was a license. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is test to, to ensure that the security, the, the safety on the, uh, on the integration is right. Yes. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this very early look at a truly fascinating company. I thought that there were two things that were really exciting about Transition One. There's actually three. Number one, affordability. Electric cars are still too expensive for most people. This is cheaper. Taking your existing car in, getting the engine chopped out. Not only is it more affordable, but it's kinder to the planet. That brings me to point number two, using what we've already got. It's all well and good going out and buying shiny new cars, but most of us already have cars. What's going to happen to them in the electric future? Well, hopefully a big chunk of them are going to catch a second wind as EVs. But the third thing that I've only really gleamed during my time here with Imeric is the notion of using existing garages to install these kits. Transition One are not going to convert them for you. They're going to make the kits. They're going to ship them internationally. They're going to teach garages around the world how to install them. And then all of a sudden, these chop shops around the country that currently have increasingly less and less to do get a new lease of life. They've got new work to do, turning petrol cars electric. I've talked in recent videos about this mindset change that's needed as we enter the electric era. This philosophy of less is more, of taking only what you need and nothing more than that. The car that most reflects that that I've driven so far, probably the Dacia Spring, which you all loved. This is that philosophy on steroids. It is simple, it's minimalistic, it's affordable, and we love it. Hopefully, we'll be back here in a year or two to check out a gleaming, shiny new factory floor and test the finished article. Fingers crossed it all goes well for these guys because I love what they're doing as a company. So there we have it, transition one. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Jack. I mean, everyone enjoys episodes with Jack. Jack's marvellous. Oh, Jack's young. Jack's tall. Jack's got loads of hair. I hate Jack. Anyway, here's another episode that Jack did. It's absolutely brilliant. Here's our latest episode. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged to get more Jack. And there, you can support Jack on Patreon.